Hello, you're on Pablo Spot. I'm George. Welcome to a new episode in this series on exploring GitOps process with Atlantis. And today, I'm going to set up GitHub applications to integrate with my local Atlantis instance. And so if this series and the content on this channel lines up with your interests, hit the subscribe button and join me in this journey of learning, by the way. So, let's start coding. In the previous sessions on this series, I have been using my GitHub account to integrate my GitHub repository with my Atlantis service. In the automation world, this is not ideal. When working with automation, the process needs to be decoupled or detached from a specific user as much as possible. The account that drives the process needs to be a functional account that is generic and not dependent on specific user. Why? A user can make changes to his or her account or profile to cater to his needs, and these changes could have direct impact to the automation. For example, if the user wants to change tokens or passwords, obviously, these kind of changes would break the process. Today, I will be creating GitHub applications to move the Atlantis integration away from personal access tokens tied to my GitHub account. So, on my GitHub profile, I will head down to the settings option, and then I'm going to head down to the developer settings on the left panel. And then on this page, I need to make sure I've selected GitHub apps and then click the new GitHub app button on the far right of the page. And then I'll start setting some properties for my GitHub app, starting with the name. For the homepage URL, I will be setting a temporary value for this. This URL is not used in the Atlantis integration, so I can get back to this at a later stage of the series. Everything else can stay as is for my current purpose, but what I need to make sure is I set the values for my webhook section. The webhook URL field needs to point to an Atlantis endpoint that GitHub will talk to. And this is the Atlantis service on my local machine, which I'm exposing to the internet through ng-rock. For now, I will set some temporary values on this field, and then I need to set repository permissions for this new GitHub application. I'll give read-write permissions for checks, and then contents, and then issues, and then grant read-write permissions on pull requests, webhooks, and that's it. My GitHub application does not need permissions to any organization or users, so I'll leave these sections untouched. And on the subscribe to events section, I will set the necessary permissions or subscriptions to my GitHub application. So I need to make sure that these are checked. Firstly, check run, and then issue comment, issues, pull request, pull request review, pull request review comment, and lastly, push. And then if I scroll down and click create GitHub app, and on this landing page, I get a notice that says I need to generate a private key to install this application. So I will head down to that section on private keys and then click generate a private key button. This will trigger download of my private key automatically. So it is important to store this file somewhere safe. And if you lose this file or your GitHub app is compromised, you can always go back to this page, delete the key and generate a new one. And if I scroll back to the top of this page, I need to take note of this application ID because I need the value when I get to updating the configuration of my Atlantis instance. And all that's left for me to do now is to install this application. So I will click install app and then click install. I am going to opt for all repositories on this prompt on my account to make this setup simple, but you have the option to set specific GitHub repositories that this application can have access to. So I'm going to go ahead and click install. And now I have a GitHub application that has access to all my repositories on my account. So what I need to do next is head to my VS Code. I need to change a few environment variables for my Atlantis instance. So let me go ahead and open my Docker Compose file. Because I am now using GitHub application, I no longer need to set GitHub user and token. I need to replace this with three new environment variables. One is for my GitHub app ID and another one for my GitHub private key file. And lastly, an environment variable that will allow cloning of repositories inside my Atlantis instance. I also need to update my environment file for these changes. So let me open my m.local file. 
and then get rid of the environment variables that I no longer need and add the new ones. I'm going to set the app ID environment variable using the app ID that we saw earlier. And for the GitHub app key file, what I need to do first is copy the private file that I downloaded earlier into my config path. So let me head to my VS Code terminal. Now back to my VS Code Explorer. I don't want this private key file to be added to my repository. So let me add this to my git ignore. Now back to my environment file. Because I'm mounting the entire config directory to the Atlantis container, I can set my app key file environment variable to point to the appropriate location of my GitHub private key file inside the container. And for the write git creds environment variable, I'm going to set this to true. And now let me head to my VS Code terminal and prepare for the run. And now that all my services are up, I need to extract the right URL from my ngrock forwarding endpoint. So let me switch to my browser and then access my local ngrock service. And then I'm going to copy this URL and then head to my GitHub application. And then on the webhook section of this page, I'm going to update the webhook URL to contain the ngrock forwarding URL with slash events at the end. I'm also going to set the webhook secret and then click save changes. And now I'm going to head back to my VS Code session and then update the Atlantis URL on my environment file and then head to my VS Code terminal and then open a new terminal session and restart my Atlantis service. And now I'm all set to see all of this in action. So let me switch to another VS Code session that contains my single sign-on infrastructure. So this is the same branch that I work on on the previous episode. I'm going to make a very minor change in here just to trigger a pull request run. And now I'm going to head to my VS Code terminal and commit and push my changes. And now let me switch to my browser. The plan process ran very quickly, but what essentially happened is that a new step has been added to my pull request checks, which involves a call to my local Atlantis instance to run the Terraform plan process. The process is done and a new comment is added automatically to the pull request. The only difference is that this time, it's not showing my account name, but the name of the GitHub application that I created earlier. So now let me go ahead and apply this change. And that process is done. And the same thing as what we saw with the plan, a new comment is added automatically into the pull request and it contains the name of the GitHub application instead of my account name. What I can also do is access the GitHub application settings and attach a logo to this application. And now if I head back to my pull request and run Atlantis plan, the plan process is complete and the comment that's added automatically into the pull request contains the run Atlantis logo. And that's all I have for today. Stay tuned as I continue to explore GitOps process with Atlantis. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and send me some likes if you find this useful. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you like the content on this channel. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.